There's never been a worse time to buy real estate instead of rent. That is the headline of a recent article that was just published on the Wall Street Journal of all places. What? The Wall Street Journal? Hey, if it's in the WSJ, it must be true, right? <laughs> Let's dive into this because it hits right into these issues of affordability. It gets right into the issues of what the market is hearing right now, but we need solutions as well because if you're selling real estate, you can't not sell real estate and earn a living. Hi there, and welcome to the Chris and Gary Show. My name is Chris Scott, and I am joined by Gary Kreth, my partner in crime here, and we are here to talk about all things real estate. And we've got an exciting, juicy topic to dive into today because we're talking about things related to housing and housing affordability. In fact, we're going to be diving in and answering the question that is posed by a recent Wall Street Journal article that said that says there's never been a worse time to buy instead of rent. Well, let's dive into this and answer that question. Uh, before we do, do me a favor. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel to make sure you get updates. And if you like what you hear today, go over and check us out on our website at thepaperlessagent.com or on Instagram at thepaperlessagent. Let's dive in. Well, first off, I'd, I'd love to know who the author is and whether they have always rented or if they own a house. My guess is that this is an author who probably has never owned real estate and rents real estate and found great reasons why you should never buy a house. Well, um, but Gary, reality... it does, the, the subject line for the article, or excuse me, the, the sub headline, right? So there's never been, I'm reading it off to the side of the screen, right? There's never been a worse time to buy it instead of rent. It is now 52% more expensive to buy a home than to rent one because of the climbing mortgage rates. Okay, so, where? Uh, I don't know, Gary. <laughs> so, you mean there's not just one mortgage rate and there's not just one situation across the entire country? Are you trying to tell me that real estate's local, local, local? <laughs> you know, that's that's one thing that drives me nuts about these national headlines looking for national clicks with national clickbait is that they talk about real estate like it's a national or North America marketplace, which it is not and it never has been. Okay. There are markets and then there are sub markets. There is no national market. Okay. So um, that that's the first refute I have against this whole claim that this is the worst time to do it. Maybe in certain sub markets, maybe in certain cities that are overinflated. But does that mean that all cities all sub markets within cities, it's a bad time to buy or the worst time to buy. Yeah, I guess I, you could I don't add believe to that. You could add to it that means all situations and circumstances. There's another right? yeah, that's absolutely. a whole other issue, right? Like uh, if you were doing a 1031 exchange and you already sold that home and you needed to buy one so you can continue to defer those taxes, it don't matter what's going on in terms of whether it's good or not to buy because you have a specific strategy. I think absolutely because I, I look at that like I've done 1031 tax deferred exchanges. And if I've got several hundred thousand dollars on the line that I'm either going to pay a cap gains tax against or not. I'm I'm okay overpaying right now in order to avoid that tax as long as things certain certain things make sense. I'm also okay exploring different markets and sub markets that I've not explored yet because you know okay let's take Austin for an, an, yeah. for example. Austin has had significant rises in uh, valuations over the past few years. Mm -hmm. So I would speculate that, yeah, if you really investigate Austin is now the best time to buy in Austin, maybe, maybe not, but then you come down to circumstantial situations. Mm -hmm. Am I doing a tax 30, tax a 1031 tax deferred exchange? I can still find a great deal right mm -hmm. now. Um, also, here's the other thing. What if I'm relocating and I know I'm gonna be there for a while? Well, you know what? Sellers right now might actually be more motivated to sell me a home than when interest rates come down and demand increases. So this is a blanket statement that I think is um, irresponsible of the Wall Street Journal. I do think, though, it is it captures the sentiment of many, right, of many in the marketplace that... Uh, and it could be people who are our peers, you know, real estate professionals or the consumers out there that we're working with that we kind of have to 
not dispel this myth, because if you just look at it from the perspective of affordability and, you know, getting a mortgage to pay for a home, um, you know, under the, you know, is it more expensive now than it was before? You probably can't refute that. Now, you, whether right, it's- right, a, right, okay, so so hold on. Yes, if we're taking a snapshot in time, like good. right now, this second, and not pulling in any sort of speculation or judgments about the future, mm -hmm. maybe that is correct. Gotcha. But if you are living in the now and now only, and you're not planning for the future thinking, okay, well, rates are high right now, but you know what? I can refi later. Mm -hmm. um, rates are high right now, but also, gosh, appreciation on these properties keeps going up. Mm -hmm. um, rates are high right now, but where else am I going to put my money where I'm actually going to get a significant ROI? That instant. In order to address this issue, because this gets down to housing affordability, right? And that's been an ongoing issue. I was reading a study from a National Association of Realtors where they were asking brokers what you know, what they saw as the biggest concern right now. And they were asking agents, you know, what are the biggest obstacles to getting deals right, done right now? And, you know, everyone cites that it's housing affordability, right? And that's two things, right? That is uh, home values being higher and that is interest rates being significantly higher than what people are used to, right? And so you would say that housing affordability, that is an issue. And it's probably for a lot of people a deterrent. However, I think a good way for us to break this down is what can we as real estate professionals, what should be our thinking? Um, what should be the conversations that we're having with people? Um, and, you know, like, what is the approach that I should take in trying to get business done in this market? I think then second, I think we should be looking at, all right, part of that answer is helping them understand what to say to buyers, what to say to sellers. And so I think we also need to go to that level as well as to say, what are the conversations that I should be having with my buyer and seller customers? so that I can discern what is really best for them. It, it, there's no universal approach to your point uh, to solve this affordability issue. And there's no universal approach on whether something is a good or bad time to buy or sell real estate. It's all up to the individual. It's all up to the location and individual circumstances. So I think then we can get into that. So, okay. Well, let's, let's first dive into the real estate agent, the real estate okay. professional, the broker, the agent, what have you. Um, you know, first and foremost, Chris, you know, we talk about, gosh, if we're looking at the national market and, you know, I believe that most of us in real estate believe the hype. Like yeah. we read the headlines and we believe it. And if we believe it, then we automatically transmit that to buyers and sellers. So first and foremost, I would wish that we would sever that, uh, that connection between ourselves and the national hype and media, because National hype and media, let's be honest, all they're trying to do is what? Garner more advertising dollars. And the way they do that is by eyes on their media. So by having the hottest uh, topic out there that gets people responding, they get that accomplished. And so what do we need to do now? Very first and foremost, I would say is gain specific knowledge about your marketplace. Uh, ignore the national hype, the national media, the national real estate market, gain market knowledge, become uh, a market expert in the market that you service. Here's why. By doing that, you will be able to educate your buyers and sellers and potential buyers and sellers about what, it, what the reality is versus the hype. Uh, and by doing that, we become the professionals that we're supposed to be behaving as mm -hmm. and having the knowledge that we're supposed to be able to share. So gain that knowledge. Also, gain specific knowledge from your lenders about what is really happening with loans right now, not on a national spectrum, because not all loans are the same. They're right. not. <laughs> You know, because so, you know, not all borrowers are the same, right? and not all exactly. So, gain specific knowledge about your marketplace, your clientele, your um, offers that you have with your lenders, because then by having that, you kind of become the educator. You become the norming uh, in the storm, right? I would actually say this. I, I don't. I, it is I, as you were talking about that, Gary. 
there is some usefulness to paying attention to some of the junk that's out there. I'll give you an there example. Is. I'll give you an example. I, in the sub headline for that same article, it says it is now 52% more expensive to buy a home than to rent one because of the climbing mortgage rates. And, you know, that is a headline clickbait worthy type thing. Oh, yeah, now's not a good time to buy. I've been thinking of buying now is not a good time. All our firms is concern or fear that I have. But, you know, as real estate professionals, we have to ask better questions and get more detail and really dissect. Well, what are they talking about here? Because there's a whole load of uh, a lot of assumption in that in those statements that inspire fear, unfortunately. Um, they inspire fear of the market, fear and concern about moving forward in it. Whereas as a professional, I need to understand what, they're, what, what are the assumptions that they're including in here. Probably reading that article, getting an understanding, but then looking at it from both perspectives. Yes, it may be more expensive, but wouldn't you want home values to appreciate if you were to buy a home? And the answer exactly. is yes, you, you do. And you know, without a timeline from when that when that, you know, 52%, I mean, heck, a home value, you know, it is now 200% more expensive to buy than to rent if you factor, if you go back far enough in time, right? Because the home values have gone up that much, it would be, that would be the case, I think. No, you, you're, I, I love what you just said is we have to learn to ask better questions mm -hmm. um, instead of just blindly following, asking better questions, we're going to extract better answers. And one thing, especially in a turbulent marketplace, is we need to understand as real estate professionals that we must be the voice of reason uh, when we're communicating with buyers and sellers and past clients. Because by asking better questions, we can actually have the knowledge, the assessments, and the, and the assertions to say, as your real estate professional, I'm your voice of reason here. And this is the information I have. This is the knowledge I have about you, your situation, and the marketplace that you're looking at. I love what you said, Gary, is that we can be the voice of reason. Now, that doesn't mean we need to be overly optimistic or hype or lie about the market either. It means we need to have a rational approach. You know, the fact is, yes, are fewer homes selling right now? Yes, but there are still homes buying and being sold and being purchased right now, right? Like every day there's homes that are being bought and sold. And so we have to ask ourselves, okay, well, what is the message that I should be conveying or that I should be relaying out there in response? Because, you know, Wall Street Journal is educating my clients, unfortunately, in a negative way. I need to be the voice of reason to educate them on what is possible, what is realistic. Yep. I mean, the fact is you, you, it may not be a good choice for you to move right now. And that's, well, that, that's, that, this is my next point is so, so the first thing that we need to do as real estate professionals is gain that knowledge. Uh -huh. The second point is to truly understand what are the needs, the wants, the desires, the concerns, the fears, the situation, the financials of our clients so that we can actually advise them. Because Chris, you know, if you're a seller or a buyer and you come to me and you say, Gary, should I sell right now or should I buy right now? My answer should not be, which I hear all the time, it's always a great time to <laughs> yeah. sell. No, it's not. <laughs> what, not. It's always a great time to buy. No, no it's, it's not. not. <laughs> Here's the thing. My answer is, well, Chris, it depends. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about your current situation and the desired outcome that you want from this. So then we can actually make a decision together. Is this the right time for you to sell or for you to buy? Because it depends mm -hmm. on you. It depend. It doesn't depend on anything other than you and your situation. And so for us as agents out there saying, Hey, you should sell right now. It's a great time to sell. Maybe, but Chris, I will also say this. This is not specific to this market. This is specific to real estate. Because if you came to me four years ago and said, should I sell right now? My answer is always maybe. You know, it's really interesting. I think uh, according to a recent uh, National Association's Realtors report, uh, I think roughly half of sellers right now are baby boomers. And um, makes sense, right? Makes sense. Because what are they doing? They're selling and they're moving on to another stage in life. Yeah, um, most of them are probably downsizing right now. 
right? Interesting, they're not selling to rent, they're selling to buy, even though interest rates may be higher. Inter you know, like they, because they, uh, it's more important for them to own and they're less uh, sensitive to price at this point. They're less sensitive to mortgage rates. Many of them might have very large down payments, if not be a cash buyer, because right. they're downsizing from a home that maybe they were in 40 years. And so there's a ton of equity in it. They paid that mortgage off a long time ago. And so I think being able to uh, be that voice of reason and being able to communicate this to people actually allows you to stand out in such a way that you will probably start to attract those people who aren't as sensitive to mortgage rates, who are in situations where it doesn't matter what the mortgage rate's doing. By being well, that you know, voice it, this is a great message to go to the marketplace with, but it all comes back to it depends. And the it depends or the maybe comes back to your specific knowledge of the marketplace and your specific knowledge of the consumer. What are they looking to buy or, per buy or sell? What is their current situation? Do they need a loan? If they do need a loan, what's their down payment? What's their, um, what, what's their other financial situation? Because here's the other thing. You know, what if I talk to somebody and they say, well, my financial advisor uh, doesn't want me to buy, wants me to keep stuff in cash. And I'm like, okay, fantastic. Let's take a look at that. How much interest are you getting off of that cash sitting in the bank? Let's talk to the financial advisor. Let's make, let's have a true understanding of what's going on and why they want you to keep the cash versus buying a property, maybe having a higher interest rate short term and then refinancing later, but realizing a significant, a potential significant gain over the next few years as other buyers get back into the marketplace. There's so many factors that come into making a decision about buying and selling real estate that we cannot sit back on our laurels and watch the national media and make and allow our buyers and sellers to make decisions and allow us to make decisions based on what they're saying about the national media or national marketplace. Why? Because it depends. It all depends on the specific situation, the specific customer, the specific marketplace, the city, everything. It depends. So let's move past the idea around this national versus local. Okay. And get into some specific conversations that we could be having. Sure. Um, so actually, we might still borrow from this article just to answer this question. But now, look, Gary, let, let's say you were going to share a post on social media, or maybe you were going to share a video that you've recorded on social media as a response to this article saying that there's never been a worse time to buy instead of rent real estate. You know, what would that conversation be? What would that tweet be? What would that Facebook post be? What would that short video sound like? So that you could be that voice of reason, but at the same time, keep the door open for people who are interested in asking questions. So I would refer right back to that article and use their headline. I would use their headline. Why? Because it's great clickbait. It's going to get <laughs> eyes on what I'm having to say. It's great stuff. So I would use it. And then I would say, but did you know in Austin right now, this is actually what's going on. Uh, and if you are looking to buy or sell real estate, it actually depends on your current situation. Uh -huh. Would you like a specific assessment of your situation and how you may be able to win in this current marketplace? Then you need to reach out. That's what I would be saying is that like, yes, this is wow, flashy stuff in the market right now. It, but in reality, this is what's actually happening. This is coming back to the voice of reason. This is actually what's happening right now in Austin. Or if I want to get even more specific, in the neighborhood of Westlake or the neighborhood of Lakeway or, or neighborhood of Oak Hill, uh -huh. whatever it may be. This is really what's right. actually happening right here. Because what I'm doing is I'm separating myself, putting a huge bridge and gap between myself as the expert way up here and the national media way down here. It's like, okay, they got your attention with this trash. Let's actually talk about specifics as a professional. When I create that huge gap, that bridge, I'm building trust and people will say, oh, wow, that Gary guy, he actually knows what he's talking about. Maybe 
you know, maybe there's something there. Maybe we should talk to them. You know, it's interesting. I love, I love your approach. Basically, it's to educate people, all right? Because, uh, you know, a clickbait headline like, hey, it's bad time to buy or the market's going to crash or anything like that. Um, it's designed to, it has all these assumptions and it's kind of feeding into the fear or the assumptions that that person who's going to re reads that article. And so what you're doing is you're taking that and saying, oh yeah, this is flashy. Let me explain to you and educate you on what's really going on. Right. Now you're a voice of reason. Now you're dispelling fear and you're coming across as that trusted advisor. Because it's not like you're going to say, oh, I mean, it's not like you're going to ignore the fact that interest rates have gone up. But what you can do is know that, I mean, like here's something that we've been having a conversation about, which is, you know, most consumers really don't have an understanding of the math behind buying and selling real estate. Um, I know as sellers, they have no idea really what's going to go into the fees and the costs associated with selling that home. I know it's roughly around 8% total. You know, I think on average is what uh, the taxes and so on and so forth, all the fees associated with the transaction. The sellers don't know that until they get that little net sheet that explains this is all the things that are going to happen from you with their specific situation. I think the same thing is with when people are buying real estate. You know, they look at this, there's a lot of assumption. People may not realize they haven't been educated that did you know you can buy interest rates down or that sellers in a current market, depending on your market, might offer to help buy down the interest rate, right? Like consumers don't know it. Consumers are of the mind and many have the assumption that you have to put 20% down on a home, right? Which is not true, right? But that's the assumption is that, well, oh, this, I got what you're talking about is specific knowledge. This It comes right back to having specific <laughs> knowledge about yeah. that. You're absolutely right. There are a ton of incentives that sellers can be offering to home buyers right now, there are a ton of incentives that buyers could be negotiating into a purchase contract right now. There's a lot of knowledge that we as real estate agents need to be sharing and dispelling myths. You know, one thing, one, there's this one I saw recently is that, did you know when interest rates went from three and a half to three and a half percent to seven percent, your mortgage or the cost of purchasing a house doubled? I'm like, oh, hold on. <laughs> I could be convinced that yes, maybe the interest rate has doubled, but here's the thing. The fact of the, the facts do not support this clickbait that the cost has doubled to purchase a house because interest rates doubled. It, it mathematically does not work. Right. But unless you sit down and do the math, you wouldn't even know that, right? Like, well, especially somebody like myself, you, know, you just bad at it's math. It's so easy to just believe the hype. It's easy to believe reading this article that, oh yeah, there was a time when all in, all in, right? Um, my monthly payment was going to be a thousand dollars a month and now it's $2,000 a month. That's not true. It's not true. Right. And, and, and so, so that's, that's a lot of it, Chris, but also understanding like you're talking about, what are the different incentives? What are the different um, loan modifications that you can make? Like a three, two, one or a two, one buy down. There's a lot of buy downs. There's a lot of uh, opportunities for sellers to offer incentives to buyers to purchase. By the way, here's another one is if you're buying a house and somebody owns a house outright, there's an option for you to uh, also negotiate into the deal seller financing. You can do short term seller financing for the next three years until until you think rates might come down and then you cash out of that and finance the house differently. So there's so many different options, but it comes down to knowledge. It comes down to having the right partners in the mortgage space. You know, if, if I, if I'm sitting here looking at this and I'm looking at a current deal that I want to make sure I get done and the buyer and my, and I'm representing the buyers and the buyers are like, there's no way we can afford it. This, you know what I'm doing? I'm calling their loan officer, Jeff Chalmers. And I'm saying, Hey, Jeff, how do we make this deal work? And Jeff is going to be able to say, let me turn around, open up my toolkit in my mortgage box, and let's see what we can parcel together here to make this work. That's the difference of having the right mortgage partner and a huge bank like, I don't know, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, where you're just talking to some machine and they're like, no, we don't do that. No, we don't do that. No, that won't work. Now, you need to find the right mortgage partner to be able to have these conversations with to say, 
Hey, we're selling a house. What can we offer to the buyers as an incentive? Hey, we're buying a house. What do we need to negotiate from the seller to make this palatable for us so that we don't feel like we're losing on this situation? That is the power of a true pro professional. That is the power of a true knowledgeable real estate professional and the voice of reason in real estate. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, you mentioned Jeff Chalmers, who we had on a recent episode of the Chris and Gary Show, and he was talking about all of the different options that are out there. You know, uh, he, he brought up things. I'm like, wait, I, I didn't write that, that exactly. I write he that goes, oh, yeah, this is new. Dude, <laughs> check this out. This is awesome. Yeah, so. because you know, um, lenders, right? They get paid when transactions happen, and so they are incentivized to figure out how can we make. Uh, it work. How can we make this work for the buyer? How can we make this work for the seller? And I think um, so much of it comes down to working with the right people. Right now, in the current environment, you should have some good lending professionals that you're talking to, that you're learning from, and maybe even introducing to prospective clients uh, or just your database in general. Say, hey, this is that we had Jeff on a recent podcast. And you know that might be something that you want to do with one of your preferred lenders is bring them on to, obviously you probably don't have a podcast, but you might put them, bring them on to a short video that you're going to post on social media talking about these very same issues, but you know it's going to be coming from their expertise in their toolbox of what they have available, which is going to be more than we have available, right? Because they're the lender. 100%. Having the knowledge, working with the right professionals, having that team of knowledge, because they're going to have specific knowledge that I don't have. And so having this team of knowledge to really educate our clients and help guide them in their path, that's, that's where you're going to win. That's where you're going to stand out. That's where you're going to grab a greater piece of the real estate pie. And so at the end of all of this, who's really going to stand out? You. You're, you're the one who's going to shine. You know, Gary, one of the things that I've noticed in, in real estate in general, and probably I'm sure this is of a lot of uh, service professionals, is... Um, not getting to the core of an issue. <laughs> and you have this little magic phrase that you like to use when you're talking with prospective customers, when you're talking with prospective clients that you like to use to really get to the heart of an issue to see, is this the right time for you or is it not? Can you share with everybody that little magic phrase that opens up so many doors um, sure. and leads to the outcomes that we're hoping for? The short phrase is, can you tell me more about that? The longer phrase is, Wow, Chris, that really seems important to you. That, uh, can you tell me more about that? Because here's what that does is I'm not asking him, wow, what, why did you say that? What I'm asking him is, gosh, would, would you mind just telling me more about why that's so important to you? What happens, like you said, Chris, is you get subsurface. You get deeper into the conversation of to what is really going on. I mean, it could be, I, I've had conversations with people whose parents have cancer and they need to move them out of a two-story house into a one-story house. But if, if all they said is, hey, you know what? We need to sell my mom's uh, two-story house. Okay. Well, I'm not attached to anything. I don't uh. understand the importance of that. And I might advise them completely differently uh. than if I know, oh, mom has cancer. Mom can't go up and down the stairs anymore. We need a single-story house. That's a completely different situation and motivation to make a move. Mm -hmm. Whereas if they just said, hey, we, we need to sell this two-story house, I'd say, well, you know what? Um, in that neighborhood, um, it, right now is not the best time to sell. But it might be for their situation. As a professional salesperson, my job is to uncover a client's situation so that I can advise them with my knowledge. And... The only way I can do this is by closing my mouth and opening my ears. And you, the, the easiest way to understand if you're doing this appropriately is take a gauge. Understand how much of the conversation are you speaking and how much of the conversation is your client speaking. And if it is not 75-25 to where your client is speaking 75% of the time and you're only speaking 25% of the time, then you're talking too much and you're not doing your job. So become a better listener, become a better question asker uh -huh. and investigate. Uh, that's what being an advisor is. An advisor is not advising somebody based on national media. Uh -huh. An advisor is advising somebody based on their situation 
and mm-hmm. what might be best for them. Well, I think that in doing so, you get to become that voice of reason, you know, to your database, to your local market, and then someone who is going to be sought out, right? Someone who is thinking of maybe making a move, who is concerned, says, sounds like Gary's pretty reasonable about this. You know, he's not out there saying that interest rates aren't up. What he's saying is that it depends on whether it's right for me and being able to, for me to get educated on what's out there. Now I come to Gary with questions and he classically will say, can you tell me more about that? Now all of a sudden that the opportunity is going to show up. We have to be at peace ourselves first. And I mean, we have to be educated, but I think going out and getting, you know, having conversations with lending professionals, for example, so that you can understand what the options are out there. You know, talking with other real estate professionals who are like-minded, who aren't so concerned about the news, but are focused on helping their clients solve problems. These are all things that we can do because the worst thing I believe that we can do is to buy into the headlines. You started our uh, conversation today, Gary, by saying there's too many people in our industry who are be- who are falling into the fears. It's not so much they believing in what's out there; it's falling into the fears and the assumptions that uh, these articles fall pre- that that they're capitalizing on to be able to get attention. So those are just some ways that we as real estate professionals can actually be armed to be better, to do better, and to serve our clients even better. And if you want to continue to learn about how to serve your clients better and and you really liked this conversation, number one, make sure that you like this video. Number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you get updates as our next episode comes out. And number three, make sure that you comment down below. Let us know your thoughts on this current conversation and how you think you can best serve your clients. And with that, Chris and I will see you in the next episode.